Hey guys, it's Markov and Copper vs Glass. Now if you remember quite a while ago I done a video on a new launcher called Aviate. Now at the time it was in private beta, it's now available for the public. So what I'm going to do is go through the setup process of Aviate and just see if there's any differences between when I last used it and now that the public version is out, if there are any major changes. So, let's take a look. First thing you're going to notice is the icon itself has now changed. It's completely Yahoo-ized, as I'm going to call it, because um, Aviate is now owned by Yahoo. So in terms of the actual launcher itself, you can see a lot of white and purple, and that kind of translates through to the menus and things like that as well. So it's slightly different in that sense to the beta that I tried earlier on last year. Once you first load up Aviate, it's basically going to guide you through a quick setup process. Now there is a video that you can watch that's going to explain Aviate, but I'm going to try and do my best to kind of translate what the video is saying into my own video for you guys now. So I'm just going to click on Start, and it's going to tell us that Aviate is basically a simple new layout for our phones. Apps automatically get organized for you, which is definitely a nice feature and something that I did like from the private beta. And intelligent information throughout the day. Um, again, something that I liked from the beta was that throughout certain times of the day, it puts certain apps on your home screen that it knows you use on a regular basis. So for instance, if just before you go to bed, you set an alarm using the clock, that's going to appear at night time. If in the morning you want to check the news on Flipboard, and if you keep doing those actions, then the actual launcher itself will know that you're doing that and will put those apps front and center each time. I'm just going to click on Setup Aviate. To set up Aviate, set the most apps that you use the most, basically. So this is basically going to try and do what it does automatically, but manually. And the reason why it's going to do this is because I've only just started to use the app, so it's not going to know the applications that I'm going to be using most often. So I'm just going to select some applications here that I use on a regular basis, just to see exactly how this is going to work, and just see if it recognizes things as well as it used to. Click on next, and now it's going to say to personalize Aviate, select the types of apps you use most. So for me, it's going to be productivity, social. I'm not really a fan of games playing them all the time. Photography, definitely. Music, news. And that's pretty much it for me, I would say, in terms of the apps that I use most. Click on next. And obviously on the next screen, it's going to say that we want to use Aviate always because it's going to overtake the launcher that I'm currently using, which is the Google Experience launcher. So I select Aviate and then click on Always. Your new home screen is ready and then it's going to say that I can start use Aviate. So I'm just going to click on that now. You can see here that this is now my home screen. It's completely overtaken what I had on here previously and it does look a bit different to the private beta that I've tested beforehand. So you can slide between home screens. Here it's going to tell us the time of day, which is daytime. It's going to give us some information that we may want to know. So it's actually taking this information from the News Digest app from Yahoo, which is definitely great, meaning you don't have to have the actual application itself installed on your device. And I'm pretty sure that this weather information is going to come from Yahoo Weather as well. So that's definitely a nice feature. Now here it says no events today. I'm guessing this is where my calendar information would normally go. We've got a pull out sidebar here as well, which lets you actually select what time of day that you want to choose. So if you want to select work or moving, for instance, if you want to move in a car, for instance. And it's also got some areas close by, for instance, it's got a local shop, uh, it's got a Babcock house, I'm not really sure what that is, I think it's a hotel. And then it's also got some setting options in here as well, which we'll go into in just a second. From the looks of it, this main screen here in the middle is my main home screen and it's going to have the applications that I use most. I'm guessing if I tap and hold, it may let me change the photo so I can add a photo here. So if I want to select this one, it's then going to change the photo for me and actually keep the other one on there, which is a bit strange. So how do I, okay, I can delete that photo there and it's going to open it up like that. Now this screen here is also where you're going to put widgets. So again, if I tap and hold, it's going to give me the option to add a widget. So in my instance, I want to have my calendar widget on there. Select always create a widget, and then it's going to do that for me as well. So it's going to allow me then to, from the looks of it, slide or kind of scroll between widgets that I've got on this main home screen, which is definitely nice. And if I slide across to the far right hand side, it says here your app collections are organized here automatically. So I can dismiss that information. And you can see here that what it's done is it's got my social apps, productivity, music, photography, entertainment, and news, and it's segregated all of these sections, which is definitely a nice feature. Now there is also a light bulb icon just here, 
And if you click on that, what it's going to do is get some suggested applications that you may like that are in line with each individual category. So I've got here some music apps that it may want me to download and have a listen to, like Pandora, Audible, Vivo, for instance. And you do the same with things like photography as well, to basically discover some applications that you may or may not know about. And then again, if you go to the very far right hand side, it says all your apps are here. You can hold and drag to add them anywhere. So if you want to add them onto your home screen, for instance, or into your most used applications, then you've got the option to do so. And it's got a really nice layout just here of all my apps. And obviously you can slide down this sidebar here if you want to do things automatically, which is definitely a nice feature. What I'm going to do now, just have a quick look into the settings option. just to have a look if there's any settings here that aren't in the beta that were there before. So again, it's telling me my battery percentage, which is definitely a new feature. And there's also a new power save option, which I'll have to have a look at. I'm not exactly sure what that is. In utilities here, basically in the settings, it's got my settings, Google Play, Downloads, Push Bullet, etc. So basically what these are going to be, I'm guessing, are if you go into your normal settings application, you can see here that you've got some accounts just down the bottom here. So I'm guessing that's going to be where you can change each individual account if you so wish. You've also got widget settings. You can also change the theme as well, which is a nice addition. It's going to make it a nice darker theme instead of the light theme that's on there before, which is more of a white color. So you can see here that it's basically completely changed the look of the home screen. And I personally prefer the darker look as opposed to the lighter look. Heading back into the settings now, you can see that you can also set default locations. So obviously the whole point of this launcher is it knows where you are, what applications you want to use. So again, if when I'm at work, I check lots of emails, if I'm at home, I go on Facebook. If it knows that location, it's gonna use the GPS in the phone to know exactly where I am and to get everything all set up, ready for when I get home basically, which is definitely a nice feature. So overall guys, AVA has changed a fair amount from the beta. I'd highly recommend checking it out it's completely free in the Play Store at the moment, and I will put a link down in the description below. If there's anything more specific about Aviate that you guys want to know, or you want me to cover in a future video, then be sure to leave those down in the comments below. And if you did enjoy this video, please do give it a thumbs up. I'm Michael from Copper vs Glass. This has been a quick look at Aviate Launcher from Yahoo, and I will catch you guys in the next video.